The Let Kashmir Decide movement is bringing to you a brand new show on JKTV where you will get the latest updates and analysis into the situation in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Modi and the Indian government want the world to believe that all is well in Indian-occupied Kashmir, but that is decidedly not the case. Join us and different guests every Thursday for insight into the latest developments in the Kashmiri freedom struggle. Good evening, my name is Claire Bidwell, I'm a human rights activist and a primary school teacher from Scotland and I'm here tonight with Mary, Mary Scully, a human rights activist and political writer from the United States of America. Um, we're here tonight to talk about the insights in Indian occupied Kashmir and Mary, it's been quite a traumatic past week, hasn't it, and past 10 days in Indian occupied Kashmir. I'm sorry, Claire. Can you hear me? I said it's been quite yes. a traumatic last week, last 10 days in Indian yes. occupied Kashmir. Yes. And we've seen quite a lot going on. Yes, especially um, not only the arrest of Kuram Parvez, who is the leading human rights leader in Kashmir, but also um, this whole series of fake encounters where young men have been um, extrajudicially executed and, and then framed up as terrorists. Um, and the bodies not returned to the families for a uh, respectful burial. So yes, it, it's it, for Kashmiris, this is just the same, you know, the same old, same old, but it's been very dramatic, especially with the arrest of Kuram Parvez. I mean, I think, I mean, I found that really quite disturbing because we know that, you know, they've been silencing every voice that they can, going right back to the lockdown of 2019 when we saw the whole uh, country silenced. And gradually over that time, we've seen the youth silenced, we've seen the people silenced, we've seen the media silenced, photographers silenced, Facebook silenced, even to the extent that you and I ourselves are no longer to be heard in Indian occupied Kashmir. We know that Amnesty International was closed down as well, unable to you know, support or anything. And so here they are now coming for human rights defenders and insinuating they are terrorists. How can a human rights defender be a terrorist? Now, I know you're quite aware there's a, um, some history, isn't there, with Kuran Parvis, what he's achieved, but also a previous arrest. Can you tell us a little bit more about him in detail? Yes, he is the program director for the Jammu Kashmir Coalition of Civil Society. Um, it's a co actual coalition of organizations. Um, one of them is the uh, Association for Parents of Disappeared um, Children, the, the organization of uh, Parvina Ahanger. Um, there are several other organizations that belong to this coalition. It was founded in 2020 by uh, Parvez Imraz, who was a human rights lawyer um, of considerable importance, um, who has filed thousands of cases on behalf of families for their disappeared children or children who have been incarcerated um, without any uh, legal justifications um, under the Public Safety Act, which is a colonial regime it's an act carried over from the British Raj, which India uses now, uh, not just in Kashmir, but in other states where there is dissidence against its rule. So um, this coalition was formed in 2020, and what it, it's an extraordinary organization. I've learned um, immensely from it. What they have always done is they investigate. They have investigators, um, staff, they investigate forced disappearances, mass graves, the numbers of those who have been, especially youth, um, of those who are arrested um, and, and uh, put into the, uh, under the Public Safety Act, where there's no, they can be put under for an indefinite period without charge. And they can be put in prisons and are put in prisons um, hundreds of miles away from Kashmir in India. Um, uh, so they dis they investigate that they investigate um, the sexual crimes against women, the torture of uh, of uh, Kashmiri political prisoners, including the torture and the sexual torture of of children. 
I would say the majority of of pri polit Kashmiri political prisoners are are boys and men. Um, so this is a very devastating thing, and there's no accounting. Um, even you know, there have been thousands uh, arrested um, just in the time that I've been involved with the issue of Kashmir. Thousands during the 2016 uprising, including Kuram Parvez himself under the Public Safety Act. And there hasn't been a real accounting of what has happened to those boys and, and, and young men. Um, there have been thousands arrested in protest since then. And um, in the 2019 lockdown, there were Indian human rights groups that traveled to Kashmir to do investigations. Of, and there were thousands then of young boys being taken in, in nighttime raids um, and being hauled in under the Public Safety Act. And there's no accounting. What happened to those boys and men? What, where are they? Are they lost in the gulag? Were they tortured? Have they been released to their families? Did they suffer any long time health or uh, psychological consequences? And, and the thing about it is that the Jake, under the direction of uh, Kuram Parvez and the other activists, the JK, the uh, Jammu Coalition, uh, Jammu Kashmir Coalition of Civil Society, they they did all of that investigative work. And that is why about the last year, um, the Indian authority, occupation authority shut them down and they must have scared uh, and threatened the activists who were part of the JKCCS so that they were silenced. Um, it was so dramatic because they had played such an important role. You can still, it hasn't been shut down yet, you can still go to their website, jkccs.net, and you can access many of their reports, their long reports uh, on these issues of forced disappearance and um, the arrest under the Public Safety Act and sexual violence. Um, so they remain an absolutely essential uh, resource on those crimes. And that has been silenced. And the arrest of Kuram Parvez in 2016, and now again, and now they've taken him to a prison in, in Delhi. I don't know if it's Tihar, but he's in, in a Delhi prison. That arrest is really to shut down the work that the JKCCS did. So um, what they did is defend all of the thousands of political prisoners. And now that work has been silenced. And there's to defend those uh, prisoners very terrible yeah and i mean we saw didn't we i think it was it in 2016 then when he was on his way to the united nations that's yes. when he was stopped and unable to go and yes. i think he was held for 75 days but they actually then freed him under that it was illegal to hold him so it yes. obviously put fear through people because you're then feeling well who are they coming for next i mean mary why is it important that this news gets out there to the world? Why, you know, why is it important that people hear and they know this? About Kuram Parvez, the arrest? Yeah, about Kuram Parvez, about any of this really that's happening. Yes, um, because, it, you know, it's like, the, it's exactly like the Palestinian struggle. They target these uh, younger activists it, it, they also arrest women, but the majority are, are young men. They do it to behead the resistance. Um, they do it, they want to get the young, they want to get the, these activists young and terrorize them, brutalize them, kill them if necessary, um, in order to stop the resistance to occupation and colonialism. Um, that's what they're determined to do. They, they directly target the young and and that has human rights organizations, um, despite all their weaknesses and problems, have documented that reality for Palestinians. And that was documented by the JKCCS, and they want that silenced. So um, it's extremely important. The defense of Kuram Parvez or of Yasin Malik or of, of um, Asif Sultan, the journalist, it isn't because we think that there are some people, political prisoners, who are more important than others. It's because those were the 
activists who led the campaigns to defend the other unknown political activists, the thousands of young boys who were arrested for stone pelting, young working class kids who, who were uh, uh, picked up as protesting, the um, kids that were pulled out of their homes in these midnight raids on the homes and, and disappeared. God knows where they are. God knows if, um, if they even know, if India even has an accounting of where these young boys are in the gulag, because there were reports during the 2019 shutdown that um, afterwards that some of the families um, were told that their sons were released and, and they didn't have their sons. They didn't know where their sons were. India didn't know where their sons were. So somebody needs to have an accounting. Where are those kids? What happened to them? Have they been killed? Were they tortured? Are they still buried in the gulag? And and the reason we defend people like Kuram Parvez is because of the central role he played in making those political prisoners an issue in documenting, investigating, and exposing and demanding that India release them. So that's why they're important. They're not important because they're they're better off or they're more educated or they're better looking. They're there, they're they're being defended simply because they play a vital role in the defense of all political prisoners. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I saw an interview with him just last night where he was discussing the fact that he will be um you know he'll he'll be accused of supporting Pakistan. And he's been accused of supporting India because he stands up for the human rights everywhere. Yeah. And so he's yeah. obviously by yeah. India seen as a threat that he's raising that. So, Mary, you know, we focused on Kuran Parvis tonight, but obviously we're aware of, you know, we brought up or you've brought up all the things that Kuran Parvis has exposed and has been able to try and get his voice out there, which is one that has now been silenced. What can we do? What can activists, what can people, what can anybody do around the globe to see us free in Kuran Parvis, free in the political prisoners, ultimately raising Kashmiri's voices, finding that solution? What can we do now today? How can we all help? Um, well, it's it's what we must do if, um, if the Kashmiri struggle is uh, not to be completely crushed. It's what we must do. Um, the Let Kashmir Decide Coalition is um, going on an all-out campaign to defend um, uh, Kuram Parvez along with the other political prisoners, along with Asif Sultan, um, Yasser Malik, and all of the thousands of stone pelters and journalists and activists and protesters. We're all in a, on an all-out campaign. Um, we are going to be um, uh, circulating a petition. Um, which we will present to the United Nations and to um, the Indian government and, and to our own governments, which are many of them are implicated in in uh, India's uh, crimes against Kashmir. We're going to be um, asking for internet campaigns where people hold up um, placards saying "Free Quorum Parvez, Yasif, uh, Yasif, uh, Asif Sultan, Free Yasser Malik." Um, free all political prisoners. We're going to be going on all campaigns of placards all over social media. We're going to be contacting individuals and organizations, human rights organizations, all over the world to ask for a public, um, that they publicly denounce this uh, arrest and demand um, the release of these prisoners. Um, we're going to just go all out and make it our focus because um you know it it um there there's there's nobody else to do it kashmiris have been silenced as you say they can't even hear this broadcast they they don't even know that we're still writing and thinking and working for their um solidarity um so we're going to go on an all out campaign in defense of kashmiri uh, political prisoners both those who are known and those who are uh, the stone pelters yeah. and it's yeah and it's fantastic and i've seen what's been brilliant is building this unity at this time because i've seen a lot of organizations going all out the latest one i read just before i came online um i mean there's many many um, that people can see all all manner you know from all sides of ideologies but the latest one was Tarika UK um, also pushing a drive so that's you know great for my work in the UK where you've got more support 
also writing to the United Nations, you know, close links with the Labour friends of Kashmir, conservative friends of Kashmir. So we can build that unity at this time. And I think, you know, alluding as well then to um, the fifth of the month, every fifth of the month as part of yeah. um, Let Kashmir Decide, we have our solidarity events which is again, it's not about any ideology that anybody wants. It's that yes. first step towards everybody coming together. And I think this is something we can gather around. Everybody can support the release of Kuran Parvis and all political prisoners. On the 5th of um, December, the 5th of every month, we encourage everybody to have tea for Kashmir. Take yes. your photograph, have an image, upload it to social media, hashtag solidarity for Kashmir and events, people hold events on the street. Each month it's getting stronger and stronger. And this is why it's really important to get the voices out, build the solidarity. So wherever you are on the 5th of December this month, yes. please have tea. We've got a short video, Mary, that we'll just play um, for the theme of this month, which we hope everybody can share and join in to raise that awareness. <laughs> के ख्वाबों की ताबीर हूं ना मैं जन्नत सी अब कोई तस्वीर हूं मैं कश ना बुजुर्गों के ख्वाबों की ताबीर हूं ना मैं जन्नत सी अब कोई तस्वीर हूं दुनिया Kashmir Decide Coalition, the movement that's united, regardless of all the political differences we have, we want to unite around the things which we agree on. And one of the things that we all agree on, bar none, is the immediate release of all political prisoners. And so we think that it's a very unifying and uniting thing um, for us to be able to work with organizations with whatever view they have about Kashmir and Pakistan and India, that we can all agree that uh, on the immediate release of all political prisoners. No, absolutely. And I know that there are demonstrations happening this weekend for Kuran Parvez. There's a vigil in Trafalgar Square in London on Saturday, two o'clock to five o'clock. Please share that work word. There was a protest down in Birmingham for him today. There are other ones. I mean, good old Google is is great, reliable source. Typing in there for the uh, protest for Kuran Parvez. We have a petition on change.org. So again, free Kuran Parvez, find the petition, please sign it, share it and send it round. Your voice does matter. Your voice does count. It really is important. Um, so I think, Mary, that probably brings us towards the end of our first show today, where we will look at um, insights into Indian occupied Kashmir, why it's happening, what's happening, how we can solve it as well in going forward. So um, thank you very much. I've enjoyed talking with you and thank you yes, so much for everything you. you've shared thank you and thank you thank you everybody out there for listening please join us yes. again thank good you. night <laughs>